The howl of a dire wolf hasn't been heard on planet Earth for more than 10,000 years. So apparently they brought the dire wolf back. Not fully, of course, only to some extent. But what they've managed to do is very interesting. They found two ancient samples. One 13,000 year old tooth and a 72,000 year old ear bone. Um, they made just some few genetic changes. Creating the dire wolf called for making just 20 edits in 14 genes in a common gray wolf. But those tweaks gave rise to a host of differences. White coat, larger size, more powerful shoulders, wider head, larger teeth and jaws, more muscles, and of course other key distinct differences. We're gonna watch this video now of them explaining how they've done it. That's because the species is extinct, or was. Colossal Biosciences is a Dallas-based company that's using genetic engineering to de-extinct long-gone species. And this is the first time Colossal's dire wolf pups, who are now six months old, have been seen by the public. That's insane. I mean, they look so cool just straight straight out of game of thrones they're so cute i want one hey ben it's jeff kluger from time magazine um a pleasure to meet you yeah. tell me a little bit about what the goal is for de-extincting and rewilding ultimately why are you doing this work it became abundantly clear that we need new tools and technologies for conservation and so we thought this was a really cool way that we could create value oh it's so cute oh i want one i want one to put my face against his and just give me a kiss oh so cute great impact uh inspire people and then also hopefully thoughtfully re rewild some of these species which apparently will also have ecological benefits to these different uh potential ecosystems beautiful animals and it's sad to think that it's us humans that have driven not only them but so many other species to extinction because and even today if you think that um this was something before no how oh, many let's see what grok says T -t today junior annual extinction rate is estimated to range from eighteen thousand to fifty five thousand species per year and as we can see here however current rates are widely believed to be accelerated by human activity including habitat loss pollution climate change and the introduction of invasive species as somebody said we humans are the biggest parasite that exists we're the biggest parasite to earth to try and do that colossal needed to understand dire wolves at a genetic level. The company has documented the process from the beginning and shared this footage with time for a cover story. So can you tell me a little bit about what went into engineering the dire wolf? We extracted DNA from two fossils that we knew from previous work had some amount of preserved ancient DNA. One was a 13,000 year old bone and the other was a 72,000 year old bone, an inner ear bone. We were able to- 72,000, that's so far away from everything that we know it got preserved and we were able to take the genetics the gene from that bone and create life you know we humans are stupid and dumb and a lot of things but sometimes there's just people that do stuff like this and it's just incredible Two dire wolf genome sequences from that which we then compared to all the other wolves for which there's already been data generated. And when we do that, we want to figure out where it is that these two dire wolves are similar to each other, um, but different from the other wolves that are out there. And so we come up with this list of genes where they're distinct. Now, our goal in the dire wolf project, just like with all de-extinction projects, is to re-engineer the core traits, the core characteristics that made these extinct species unique and able to fill whatever role that they filled in their ecosystems when they were still alive. Can you imagine how, just how much we advanced in the last 100 years, half 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, 
this kind of stuff wasn't possible. The stuff we'll be able to do in like another 20, 30, 40 years, technology was going, it was going like this. And then in the last 100 years, it just went ramped up like this. Modifications to 14 genes in the DNA of common gray wolf cells. These relatively few tweaks to the genetic code produce some big differences. The dire wolf's white coat, large size, characteristic vocalizations like that howling you heard at the beginning of the story, and more. That DNA was transferred to denucleated egg cells, meaning cells without their own genetic material, and then developed into embryos and were then implanted in the wombs of surrogate mothers, who were hound mixed dogs. We didn't know how big these embryos would grow and wanted to make sure that the surrogate was healthy. So we picked large dogs. Romulus and Remus, Kiss you. named after the Roman. Kiss you! Oh my god, they're so cute! Mythological twin brothers who were raised by a wolf. Mythological is great name for these beauties, these beast boys. Were born on October 1st, 2024. And in January, they were joined by a younger sister that the Colossal team named Khaleesi. Each wolf is on track to grow to as large as six feet long and 150 pounds. Big boys. Colossal isn't planning to reintroduce them to the wild. Instead, the three dire wolves will live out their lives on a fenced 2,000 acre preserve. Colossal does not want to disclose this location in order to protect the animals. I mean, imagine all the psychos that would want to have these these animals. Furries are salivating, fucking throbbing, spewing fucking bubbles at their mouths looking at these. And you know some shake is just going like this, eyeing them wolves, trying to get that one of one pet. Their entire life on this protected ecological reserve where they have all sorts of space and they have natural denning environment and they have a, a inclement weather hut that they can go and hide out in if they need to. They have 24 hour veterinary care. Dire wolves aren't the only species on Colossal's de-extinction agenda. An American company says it has genetically engineered mice so that they have developed some traits like mammoths. A small but potentially important step in a... They created woolly mice? ...quest to eventually bring back the prehistoric woolly mammoth. They hope to de-extinct the woolly mammoth as early as 2028. Yeah, so this is what we talked the about. The company is also hoping to bring back the dodo and the Tasmanian tiger. Look, this is a rat, Tasmanian tiger, Tasmanian rat, ugly motherfucker. Hoping to bring back the dodo and the Tasmanian tiger. This rat. If some of this genetic tinkering feels familiar, it's because Hollywood has been here first. And spoiler alert, we all know that didn't end well. Scientists were too preoccupied to, to see whether they can and not whether they should. I mean, I don't know, maybe start with some small dinos if you really want to bring the dinosaurs flying, but like pterodactyls, because those guys, even though they, yeah, they fly, they seem easy to shoot down. Yeah, don't so naturally, that. bioethicists have some concerns. Here, when you're playing with nature, uh, nature usually wins. Uh, nature is much more complicated than the ability of our brains to understand it. Genes do many things. There may be a lot of unintended consequences. Let's say we alter a gene. I love otters. Fun fact, otters hold hands when they sleep next to each other in order so they don't. none of them drifts away. Very cute a gene to make extra hair everybody make like it that burn metabolism more burn fat more uh those genes may do other things in ways that we just don't even understand so we may create animals that have lots of medical problems if we start tinkering with genes we may create a super mouse a super rat that kills all the other animals around ah uh, a super rat a fat like one meter long big teeth it's not a me it's not that it's just 
choose not through wood or through your couch. Dude grows to your concrete. Hot, 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 hot. You hear that <laughs> night gnawing in your corner. But the team at Colossal says their mission to restore extinct species is also about stopping the disappearance of endangered ones today. As experts predict, Earth will lose 30% of its genetic diversity by 2050. Colossal has used techniques learned from the dire... And it's just our fault. ...wolf project to clone four red wolves, a small but important step in fortifying that endangered species. The four new wolves could help inject fresh DNA into the red wolf gene pool, which currently suffers from a so-called genetic bottleneck the result of too few individuals carrying too little genetic variety to keep the species healthy. Mm. Yes, it would be really amazing to see a mammoth. It would be great for the habitats of Tasmania to have a keystone predator reintroduced into that ecosystem. But the tools that we're developing on the path to these species have immediate application to species that are not yet extinct. A future that is both biodiverse and filled with people. We should be giving ourselves the opportunity to see what our big brains can do to reverse some of the bad things that we've done to the world already. There's a huge need to uh, help prevent animals from becoming endangered and going extinct. We need to spend more money on conservation. Uh, particularly now, there's a lot of threats that lands that we have as national parks and as preserves are going to be used for drilling oil, for instance. So there's a lot of habitats where species now live that are going to be under threat. So, uh, and there's not enough money to help with conservation efforts. Yo, imagine how cute would be some puppies out of these guys. Yo. Phenomenal video. The howl of a dog.